own words what is meant by the equation. Is it possible? So can someone say out loud what that says? Go. The limit of f of x as x approaches to is, is equal to 5. What does that mean? Someone say it out loud to me. Someone say it out loud. What does that mean? Say out loud. What does that mean to you? What does it mean? It means that the y value of x equals 2 uh, is or, or it looks like not. Not really. That's part of it, but that's not what the limit means. What does what does it mean? You have to use the word limit in this description. But yes, in this case, that's true. But that's not necessarily. You don't know that the function is five at two. You do not know. I'll give you a hint. As something gets arbitrarily close to something else, then something oh. gets r arbitrarily close to something else. As X gets hold on. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a sec. Arbitrarily, and I'll make this bigger so you can see it. So I'm leaving it intentionally vague so that you can fill it in here. As what gets arbitrary? As what? As X gets arbitrarily close to to two, then F of X gets arbitrarily close to five. Can you get arbitrarily close to something that's already that number? What do you mean already that number? Well, f x equals five is always five. So yeah, but that's not f of x. That says the limit. That that is not saying that f of x equals five. Actually, f of x could equal anything you want it to equal. It equal. It could not be defined. The point of this is you can get arbitrarily close to five on the output as you get arbitrarily close to two on the input. Does it matter what f of x equals it to? No. It could be an open dot. It could equal a flying pony. No, you have no idea what the equation is. You have no idea what f of x is. You have no idea what f of x is. Is it possible for this statement to be true? Is it true? Is it possible for f of 2 to equal 3? Absolutely. What could this look like? You could have a function that's traveling along. It's a traveling function. That point right there is 2, 5, right? But then uh, we want 2, 3. The function is also at 2, 3 right here. There it is. As you're traveling along this line, and you get infinitely close to x equals 2, what do you get infinitely close to here? 5. Does it matter what the output is at 5? At 2, I mean. At an x value of 2, does it matter what the output is? No. If the bug is traveling along this line right here, what is it going to get arbitrarily close to in terms of a height? 5. If it's approaching from this side, what height is it going to get arbitrarily close to? 5. Does it know about this point? No. Does it care about this point? No. It does not matter what the value is at what you're approaching. It's irrelevant. It'll come into play later when we talk about different aspects of functions, but in the case of limits, does it matter if it's defined there? No. Can you get arbitrarily close to 5 by getting arbitrarily close to 2? Yes. Therefore, 5 is the limit of f of x as x goes to 2. Core this here. C. Uh, uh, March or so, what would you get for C? That's correct. Uh, D. What's the limit as x goes to 3 in general, Ali? Correct. It's different from the left and the right. And what is f of 3? 3. Think about that. The left-hand limit was one value, the right-hand limit was another, and the function was an entirely different number. So the left-hand limit exists, the right-hand limit exists, and the function itself exists. But does the li is the limit said to exist at that point? No, because the limit is different from the left and the right. For the limit to be said to, to, to say the limit exists at an x value, the limit has to be the same from the left and the right. So what's the easiest way to prove a limit doesn't exist? It doesn't have the same value coming from both directions, right? So if you want to show a limit doesn't exist, one way you have of doing that, or well, the only way right now is doing what? Showing that the left-hand limit is different than the right-hand limit. Done. Can you plug in the A value, right? In this case, the A value is going to be if, sorry, we're doing, there's a limit here as x goes to 1. You plug in 1. Can you plug in 1 into that one? No, because you divide by zero. You don't like that. Cranky things happen. What did we do yesterday in order to be able to do it? Yeah, so in this case, by simplifying, what did we do? Yeah, you factor the denominator in of x plus 1 times. They cancel, and you're left with 1 over, which can you plug 1 into there? Yeah, equals going to be equal to, it's going to go to 1 half, right? The only different structure between the graph of this and the graph of what we just did is how we just filled in the spot. Did we fill it in at 2? No. Does it matter what the output that the output is 2? No, we talked about this earlier. If there's an open dot and a closed dot up here, does that change the limit at all? No, it does not. OK, so here's something that are a few ways things can be a little bit more entertaining. On this one, can you plug in 0? 
No. Is there any sort of trig identity you can use to simplify that? Just, just say no. There isn't. Okay. There is not. You're on some of these, if you have a calculator, one thing you can do is do what? What could you do with your calculator to evaluate this limit? Put in what, where, and do what? Put in what? So, and then do what? Yeah, graph is what you're saying. Graph it. So let's graph this and see what it looks like. So at zero, does it look like there's a certain value there? Yeah. Yeah, what does it look like the value is? It's at, sorry, that's a great guess because I knew the tick marks were pi over two, but on the y-axis, it's actually what? One. It's actually one. So does it look like it's one right there? If you zoom really far in around this area right here, are you going to see a solid line at the y-axis? Absolutely not, because can you plug in 0 for x? No. no. You can't plug in 0 for x. But visually speaking, can you get really, really close to this? Yeah. Do we have the tools yet to do this limit by hand? No, we do not. We do not have the tools yet. But if you have a calculator, can you graph these sometimes? And can that be really helpful? <coughs> Absolutely. If you zoom in far enough, it's actually going to delete the pixel. But does it ever draw an open dot? No, no it does not draw an open when dot. When you put that in your graph, you just put Set it in a window here. Ready? Window. Let's go from, how about, negative 0.1 to positive 0.1. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking the window, I'm just doing a narrow slice. I'm keeping the same heights. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Let's see what happens. This does not seem to be helping my case, or helping whatever our, it's, it's going crazy. It's going crazy. So how about we zoom in again? Window, what do you want to make the window now? How about negative 0.001? to how about 0 0.001. So we're going really, we're zooming in really far, right? If there was a nice limit, we'd hope to see like two lines coming in like this, right? Let's graph it and see what happens. This doesn't seem to be helping. <laughs> it's just denser. Every time we zoom in, we see, this, we see a ton of oscillations, right? So this right here, just so you have this, I'm going to pause this. The last two examples, what did we use in order to find limits or estimate limits? We used our calculator, right? So in this case, could you graph this? Yeah, you could. You absolutely could graph this thing. If you graph this thing, what does it look like? As x goes to zero of that thing right there. So let's actually graph it. 